Hello and welcome. I'm sure you'd agree, these days we spend hours consuming online content. It could be something on a smart TV, it could be on a smartphone. We just start swiping the reels back to back and by the time we realize it's a couple of hours already gone. What has brought us into this habit of binge watching? There must be something really powerful that's behind it that we lose the sense of time. Let's understand this a little better. So we all have different interests. Some people are more into gardening, some people are more into fitness, somebody else would be more into work-related productivity. There could be people who are more after food, pet care, or travel. So our interests might vary. We are not the only people who like these categories. There's so many people like us who are into fitness. There's so many people who watch food-related content. So let's say we take an example of a person called Sharon. Sharon is always interested in consuming fitness-related content. And we know Sharon is not the only person. There are thousands of other people who are like Sharon. Let's say we just, for instance, right now, take two more people, Maya and Dale. We know Sharon, Maya, and Dale are all similar. They are similar in multiple ways. Maybe they're working mothers of a certain age group, and they consume similar content. They're particular about their health. Let's say the platform which is providing them the content related to fitness has asked us to help with the recommendations. So we have some data available based on the interaction of these users with the app. Let's say the data is like this. So we have these three users, Sharon, Maya, and Dale, and they've watched multiple videos. We are looking at three videos right now. Video one is something that all three of them have watched. Video two is something that Maya and Dale have watched, but Sharon has not watched. And same is the case with video three. Sharon has yet to watch that. We already have the ratings available for each of the videos. So video one is something that all of them consistently seem to have either rated very good or excellent. Five is the best rating and the second best rating would be four. Video two, however, which Sharon has not watched, has got just about average or below average ratings from Maya and Dave. Video three again seems to have been liked by Maya and Dave. So now based on this information, if you were to recommend a video to Sharon next, which video would you recommend? Video two or video three? Well, if you say video two, that'll be a bad choice because video two has been rated not so good by other users who are like Sharon. But video three is something that other users who are like Sharon have really given a positive response to. So video three would be a better recommendation for Sharon because Maya and Dale, who are similar to Sharon, have given it a positive response. I hope you get the idea where are we heading with this? So the recommendations that come to you when you're consuming online content are not random recommendations. They are based on something that's known as the collaborative filtering. First, they find out people who are like you. And if these people who are like you have really given a positive response to some content, that's a pre-validated content that you're more likely to consume because others like you have really liked it. Now, the sense of similarity and how do we go about putting these users together is something that you will derive from something that's known as the cluster analysis, segmentation of the users. Any sensible business today that wants to be efficient with their customer targeting would want to have a sense of clustering. Clustering becomes a very important topic. Let's take another example. Let's say we have different type of people and we try to analyze them on two dimensions. First is income on the x-axis and on the y-axis we have savings. So basically we have four labels here that we can give. So we have people with low income and high savings. We have people with high income and high savings. The people with low income and low savings, both are low. And there are people with high income on the x-axis and low values on the y-axis, that's why low savings. Now let's say you work for a bank that is interested in targeting these people for a personal loan, a small amount personal loan, which can be paid off in a short duration. Which group do you think you'd be targeting? Well, obviously high income and high savings group would not be the right group. They already have good income and they have savings in place. So they may not want to go for a small size loan. Similarly, people with low income and high savings. So while their income is low, but probably what they earn is more than sufficient for them and they already have savings in place. So if they have more savings in place, why would they want to borrow a small amount of money for an interest rate? Now, if you look at high income and low savings, this could be a potential case because their income is good. It's just that probably they have already 
a lot of monthly installments and other engagements, and they may be for a short duration needing some money, which they are very confident about paying off because their income is high. And what about low income and low savings? Well, this could be, again, a potential base that you may want to target because their income is low and savings are already low. But you want to be careful. You don't want to be taking too much risk that whatever they borrow because their income is low, they're not even able to pay back. So this would be a little bit of a risk, but you can target them. Now, what are we doing here again? Have we not already segmented people into four categories based on some property? This is exactly what we do in case of clustering or segmentation. In general, clusters are good when they satisfy two conditions. First is that all the observations within a cluster should be similar. We group observations of people together based on some similarities. That's what we saw in the previous two examples. The first example involved people who are interested in fitness-related content. The second example involved grouping people based on their income and savings. The second point here is the observations belonging to different clusters should be as different as possible. So within the cluster, the observations should have a sense of similarity. But between the clusters, there should be dissimilarities based on which you can clearly recognize that this is a different group. Clustering is an important topic from the unsupervised machine learning and data mining perspective. We'll be talking more about clustering in the subsequent videos. This is just the introduction video. Hope you get some idea about the importance of clustering. As we progress, we'll be sharing more content specific to different types of clustering, which will give you both intuitive as well as hands-on foundation so that you can utilize this powerful technique for efficient targeting. So keep watching for more. Thank you.